Hi guys, um, hello, good morning. My name is uh, Cliff McMish and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Wolverhampton Young Authors Prize. I'm an author of, well, quite a few books really. For instance, fantasy novels like this one, The Doom Spell, which is about magic and witches and I wrote it for my daughter. And in the end, I was really lucky with this novel because it's sold in about 26 languages around the world. But also supernatural stories like this, Breathe, um, which is about a boy stuck in a house with a ghost mother that he doesn't necessarily want to be with. But also much warmer, funnier stories as well. Like, for instance, Going Home, which is a very heartfelt and funny novel, I hope, about four dogs stuck in a rescue centre that nobody wants. Four dogs who hope to find their way to a new home where they'll be cared for and loved. But will they be loved? And that brings us really to the theme for this competition. Uh, and what a broad, satisfying theme it really is. And it's the theme of hope. Hope. So hope. Um, I think as people, we are constantly kind of frustrated, aren't we, in our lives. But when we are, it's always hope that helps to pull us through, especially through the hardest of times. There's a man called Tom Bidette, and he said this. They say a person needs just three things to be happy in this life. They need someone to love. They need something worthwhile to do and something to hope for. And isn't he right? I think he is. We hope for things for ourselves sometimes, but also sometimes for others. We don't always get those things that we hope for, but many of the best stories, especially those we love the most, are actually dream come true stories with hope at their heart. There are people we like, we can admire, we can really root for, who deserve something good to happen to them. They have a dream, they have a desperate hope, and they get what they hope for, or sometimes they don't get what they hope for. They just hold on to hope despite all the darkness around them. And what could be more human than that? Okay, so where to find inspiration for this, your own story about hope? Um, well, there are many places you can start. But how about starting here with yourself? What do you hope for in life? Anne Frank hoped to be free with her family, to finally be free. But what's your biggest hope in life? What do you want to achieve? What's your biggest dream? Have a think about that. And why not write about a character who shares that dream that you have? One of the great advantages to writing a story where a character shares your hope is that you've lived with that hope. You've really thought about it and felt it. So it tends to come across very real when you write about it in the story. But here's another way of looking at hope. How about a character that just hopes to win something, a great prize or a competition or to receive, become a celebrity or receive notoriety of one kind or another. Or how about something much softer? Someone who wants to win someone's affection or hopes even to win somebody's love. How about that as a thing? Or someone who doesn't want something for themselves at all. Someone who wants something for others, their community, their family for animals, for the environment. Um, where do we find hope given the climate change and the climate crisis that we have? It's a really interesting question. You may want to think about that. And something I wanted to point out to you actually is that so many of the great stories about hope actually begin with loss. Um, it can be the loss of something very serious, like you know, good friends or family members. And in Harry Potter, for instance, to choose an obvious example, He's lost his parents and everything Harry personally wants in the story comes down to wishing he'd known those parents. Uh, in another story, many of you will know the Lord of the Rings. Uh, the loss is an object, it's a ring. Sauron's lost his great ring of power and he's seeking it. He hopes to find it while well, Frodo and all the other members of the Fellowship like Gandalf and Boromir, etc. All those characters we admire and they hope to destroy it. It's actually a story about different hopes smashing against each other. And this is an interesting question when you think about hope. What happens when two hopes collide? That could be a really interesting story. 
Can you come up with two different hopes and see what happens when they're pitted together? That's difficult in the 400 words you have. It's all you have, but can you do it? Okay, 400 words. Um, let's talk about these 400 words you have to play with. It's not very many, is it? And I can stand, understand if some of you feel a little bit daunted about the lack of words you have to play with. But try not to be, because trust me, you can still create an excellent story in 400 words. One thing you obviously can't do in a story of that length is you haven't got ages to create a detailed history for your characters. You can't spend two pages talking about how they're dressed, where they live or anything like that. So what do you do? Well, there's no right or wrong way to create any story, but some methods work better than others. And here are my three key pieces. There you go, three key pieces of advice for you. First, concentrate on a single main character in your story. Yes, you can have other characters in your story, of course you can, but make your story about one main character so you have a very clear focus. Second, give that character a huge big problem. Giving your character big problems is actually the quickest, most reliable way of getting a reader interested in your story and getting them hooked. It can't be a little problem. They can't just have just stubbed their toe and they're feeling a bit sorry for themselves or they didn't have a very nice breakfast this morning and they hope their lunch will be better. It has to be really big. Think about somebody like Harry Potter. There he is. He has a huge problem right from the beginning of the story. The Voldemort, Voldemort's trying to kill him, the Dark Lord. And it's pretty serious because at the beginning at least, he's an 11 year old schoolboy who doesn't even have the spells to defend himself. Pretty big problem to have. And the sheer daunting size of that problem draws us as readers right into the story. Now the third, and this is by far the most important thing you can do when you're creating any character, is to make them want something desperately. You're aiming to create a character that readers care about, yes? Okay, well, I can guarantee you that every time you've ever loved a character in a story, that character hoped for something desperately. In Roald Mark Dahl's Matilda, for instance, she desperately hopes to be part of a warmer, better family than her own horrible one. And in a, a funnier example, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, the picture book, the caterpillar desperately just wants to keep eating. It's all he ever cares about. And in Harry Potter, yes, Harry Potter needs to stop Voldemort. But what he desperately wishes for more than anything else is that he knew his parents. One more example, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, one of my own favourite books. Charlie's desperate for the golden ticket. He's desperate to win it. But the interesting thing is why? It's not for himself. His family is poor. He's hoping to help them. And let me tell you something. We love to read stories about characters that are desperate, not for something for themselves, but to help someone else. Can you create a character like that? Whatever you do, whatever you make them hope for, the golden rule is to make your character desperately want something. If you do that, it will drive your story forward and really bring it to life. Now, for those of you, when it comes to constructing your story, who really want to think about the whole subject of how to construct a story, I'm sending through to your teachers as part of your welcome pack for this award, a guide about how to create a story in five straightforward steps. Here's what it looks like. It's only two sheets of paper, that and the other sides, like this but it's pretty comprehensive in terms of what you would need, certainly for a short story. Um, and I have some other guides as well, which I think I'm also gonna send as part of your welcome pack. So you teachers may find it useful and you students. I've got one here, I'm just trying to see which one it is. It's about creating great characters, heroes and heroines in stories. And I've got another one, which is, oh, how to create a ghost story, which is a kind of a specialist area of mine, but also how to create villains how to really create characters that we will dislike, that will drag away all our hope. So if you want those, fine. But 
For those of you who don't want to go to the effort of that, but still want a bit of advice, let me give you a quick bit of advice that was given to me by somebody who wrote for a TV series called EastEnders, which some of you might have heard. He told me this. I'm going to show you this picture. He said, here we are. You have your story. So there's your lovely beginning. And there's the middle and there's your ending. You don't know what the ending is yet. You don't know what the middle is. But at the beginning, as I'm saying to you, come up with a character with a really big problem and then make sure you know what they want desperately. What is it that they desperately want? And then his advice is this. Go straight to the end of your story and ask yourself, where do you want your character to be at the end of this story? Now you may think, how do I know? I haven't even started writing the story yet. But the truth is this. If you've thought about what their problem is and what they really want, you've probably got some idea about where they're going to be at the end. Have a think about that. If you concentrate on that, then suddenly you'll think, yeah, maybe you know where that is. And then the question is, where do you want to go from that? Now, are they going to get what they want? Are they not? Do you want a story where the, the character always gets what they want? Or do you quite like stories where maybe they don't? And there's a twist. People don't always get what they want in life, do they? They don't. It's up to you. But here's the point. Whether your ending is going to be a happy one or maybe a little darker, figure out what your ending is going to be. Once you have that, once you have your beginning, you know what your character desperately wants, what their problems are, and you know how your story wants to end. It's just a matter of filling in the smaller map that goes in the middle there. And now you have your story. Right, finally, it's been great having this little chat with you. Uh, whatever you do, I really hope you enjoy uh, writing on this theme of hope. Uh, I'm looking forward enormously to reading your stories, which I will do, and also to meeting you all on February the 14th. Uh, to announce the competition winners. Good luck, have fun, and I will see you all soon.